WFYI Podcasts, brought to you by Bloomington, home to the Indiana Hoosiers and over 200,000 acres of fall foliage in the Hoosier National Forest. Indulge in seasonal flavors at the Elm, experience breathtaking views atop four fire towers, or catch a Big Ten football game at Memorial Stadium. More, including how to plan your fall getaway at visitbloomington.com. WFYI Podcast brought to you by IU Auditorium, presenting La Miserable for a limited engagement, September 24th through the 29th. La Miserable, the timeless musical about love, courage, and hope as it relates to the survival of the human spirit. Tickets at iuauditorium.com. My Morning Jacket will be performing at the Bourbon and Beyond Festival in Louisville, Kentucky on September 22nd. I recently spoke with the band's guitarist, Carl Bremel. Carl's work with My Morning Jacket has received widespread critical acclaim. In 2007, Carl was named on Rolling Stone magazine's list of 20 new guitar gods. In Carl's debut recording with My Morning Jacket, the 2005 album Z was named by Rolling Stone as one of the 500 greatest albums of all time. Carl was born and raised in central Indiana, and he began playing music at an early age. His father, Robert Bramel, was principal bassoonist for the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. As a teenager, Carl performed with his rock band Planet Earth at all-ages punk venues around the city. But his music career began as a choir boy at the Christ Church Cathedral. Carl currently lives in Nashville, Tennessee, and we recently spoke via Zoom. Let's join our conversation. Carl, thank you so much for taking time to speak today. I'm a big fan of your work. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, I wanted to talk a bit about your history in the Indianapolis music scene. From what I understand, your career as a performer really began as a choir boy. As a young person during the 1980s, you were singing the music of Handel and Benjamin Britten, at places like the Christ Church Cathedral in downtown Indianapolis. Am I right about that? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so cool that you brought that up. Um, yeah, I, I, I was. I ended up being the head chorister for a while at Christ Church Cathedral, and uh, Dr. Burgomaster was our choir director. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a great, it was, the, you know, what's really interesting about being in the choir was that it was my first professional uh, gig. We got paid. You know, we had a, we got a little bit of money, and it was interesting. Uh, just every week, you know, it, it added a little responsibility to the whole thing. And you know, it's church and it's a service, but it was also uh, a professional musician in in a way. That's how it began. Yeah, it's a serious choir that tours internationally, right? Yeah, we got to go on some amazing tours in in England, and we. I got to sing in Notre Dame Cathedral and, you know, in Italy and Germany. It was an amazing experience. I've gone back to some of those cathedrals and cities as an older person, and I now I really appreciate what we were able to do. You know, we were able to, you know, sit in the choir pews and do an even song in Notre Dame. You know, it's like at the time we're like, oh, I just want a hamburger. You know, you're a little kid and you're on tour in Europe and you're missing home. Carl, when I was a teenager in Indianapolis during the 1990s, I spent a lot of time at an all-ages punk venue at 46 in college called The Sitcom, and I believe I saw your band Planet Earth play at The Sitcom. Uh, You were a student at Pike High School when you started Planet Earth. Was that your first band? Uh, That was the first band that has a name that I'm willing to say out loud. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Did we meet back then? I don't know. I mean, it's possible. If you were a part of that circle of people that were frequently at the sitcom, I'm sure we must have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what a, what a fun time. Uh, just the, the era of making flyers and dropping them off at all the middle schools and high schools and uh, having all ages shows.
sitcom was great and I saw some great punk shows there but we'd also like rent out the India Community Center and put on a giant show and set up a PA system and just go for it I'm not sure if you'd, it would be legal to do what we did yeah I remember you. I remember you being there. It was literally an Indian community center, and on the weekends, local punk and indie bands would uh, rent it out and do huge all ages shows. That's amazing. It was it was magical, and I remember one time I went and saw Oasis, and the opening band was Velvet Crush, and we went backstage. We like somehow found Velvet Crush because we were fans, and we were just like, "Oh, that was great!" You know, can't wait. I hope someday I get to do on be on tour like you. And they're like, "Yeah, sure." Uh, what are you guys doing? I'm like, oh, we played this all ages show. It was really fun. They're like, it's they're like, appreciate this. That's that's like the reason you do it. And he's like, this tour is fine, but that's really cool. And I was like, really? And then later, I'm like, yeah, he's right. Wow, wow, that's interesting. I was at that show too. That's the. I remember Velvet Crush and the audience member flung a pair of prescription eyeglasses at Liam Gallagher, and he left the stage after like two songs. <laughs> I think I left before that happened because yeah. I, I love Oasis's music, but I was really disappointed with just their the energy that they gave from the stage. I felt like off put. It was off putting, and I was like, "Let's just leave." Never seem like someone's trying to hurt you, cause it seems a little strange. Every time you turn your back, there's always somebody waiting to take your place. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Carl, after graduating from Pike High School, you went to IU Bloomington to study jazz and classical guitar. While you were at IU, you also formed the band Old Pike. Old Pike made a big impact at the time. You played huge shows and were signed to Sony. Um, I wanted to give you a chance to comment on your work with Old Pike, but I'm curious about your decision to study jazz and classical guitar at IU. Were you looking to extend your career beyond rock music or just trying to learn as much as you could about the instrument? Um, that's an interesting question. I, I ended up not really doing too much jazz. It was mainly classical guitar. Um, I was just trying to get into IU Music School at first. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I auditioned to the jazz guitar, to the classical guitar, and as a vocalist. And I got in as a vocalist and as a class in the classical guitar department. But the jazz guy was like, "Yeah, you're not really ready for this." And I'll and you know, I, I just that's just never been my my bag. Um, and uh, yeah, so I studied. I just did. I just fell into it, you know. And, and looking back on it now, it was really great to just be able to practice guitar for four years. That's like a special thing. And then Old Pike hap- kept going throughout college, and we ended up getting a record deal. And uh, another life lesson is, you know, we had a lot of good things going for us until we got signed to a major record label. When we made a lab, made a record and it didn't do very much, and that was just kind of kind of petered out. So like the magic era of Old Pike was actually before we got signed. Uh, when we were writing, I thought good music and and the, just the complications of the music business were a little bit too much for us at the time. Carl, a lot of my work as a music journalist focuses on the history of music in Indiana. And I'm curious if that history has influenced you at all. Indianapolis has produced important guitar players from Wes Montgomery to Scrapper Blackwell. You're known for your work on the pedal steel, and Indiana was home to legendary uh, pedal steel players like Buddy Emmons, Sneaky Pete Clano, Herb Brimmington, and the Harlem Brothers, who made many important innovations on the pedal steel from their shop in Indianapolis. Has any of this legacy and history of music in Indiana influenced you and your work? 
Oh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of all those pedal steel players. I mean, of course, I know Wes Montgomery, but, uh, you know, Buddy Buddy was like the Michael Jordan of pedal steel. You know, he's just <laughs> just so beautiful. And, and I have a lot of his CDs and stuff. Uh, and, you know, heard him playing with everyone from Willie and everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I I love Indiana Pride stuff. I love, you know, I love Kurt Vonnegut because he was like, I'm from Indiana. A lot of people, you know, kind of grow up in Indiana and run run away to the big cities and just sort of like try to pretend like they're not from Indiana. And, and I love it when people are the opposite. And uh, I'm definitely the opposite. I, I love Indianapolis and uh, I love being at school in Bloomington. It, it's a cool it's a cool place. And you know, I live in Nashville now, so that's like a quote unquote music city but Indianapolis is also a music city and uh, I really value all of that history too and Carl 2024 marks your 20th anniversary with My Morning Jacket you've had an extraordinary history with the band The achievements and recognition you've had are too numerous to mention. Uh, Any reflections you want to share on this time you've spent with My Morning Jacket? Yeah, uh, the 20 years of My Morning Jacket kind of coincides with my 50th birthday. Mm -hmm. So it it is a a moment of reflection just as in in life and also career and uh, everything just sort of happens together. I have a teenage son now and, you know, all kinds of different responsibilities that you know, when the band is not active, I honestly don't think about it too much. You know, I, I go, I go give a hundred percent when we're doing something. And then when we're not at, at the, the, one of the values of it and the ways to keep it fresh is to just literally step away and, and come back with maybe some new experiences under your belt. And, uh, that's kind of how I approach it now. It, it, we, we just made a new album, which I'm really, really proud of. And, um, it, it, the, the relationship with the people in my band is a, is one of my longest term relationships and like my longest term friends. A lot of friends have come and gone and we've managed to not only, you know, make music and tour and have ups and downs together, but, but actually like gr- keep growing a little bit um, and, and figuring out how to do what we do a little bit better. And honestly, figuring out how to enjoy what we do more is, is kind of the new goal. Finally, Carl, My Morning Jacket will be playing at the Bourbon and Beyond Festival in Louisville on September 22nd, and you're also currently on tour with My Morning Jacket. Anything you want to share about the band's tour or the current live show? This is an interesting tour. About two-thirds of it is with Nathaniel Raitliff and his band. Uh, So it's a co-headlining run, which we've never done. Uh, uh, So we're going to be alternating headlining every night. and that's going to be great. I, I think I think just having some camaraderie and, and cross pollinating with with Nathaniel and his his musicians will be really fun. I'm looking forward to that. We're going to collaborate and you know goof around and have some fun. Uh, we will do some headlining shows at the end of that, and we're playing some festivals. And uh, you know, it's always nice to play in Louisville. Uh, you know, the the band I'm not from Louisville, but a lot of the band guys are, and it's kind of a bit of a hometown show for us. And, uh, yeah, it should be a great, uh, month uh, on the road. And then, um, uh, next year we're going to put a record out. So uh, good things are afoot. 
Any final thoughts you want to share with your friends, fans, family listening uh, to this broadcast here in Indiana? <laughs> uh, shout out to Pike High School. Uh, <laughs> my old music teacher, Mr. Marshall there. Uh, I'm not sure if he's still teaching there. And uh, yeah, all my all my loser buddies. I miss you all. Thank you so much for taking time to speak, Carl. And good luck on the tour. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. WFYI Podcasts, brought to you by Bloomington, home to the Indiana Hoosiers and over 200,000 acres of fall foliage in the Hoosier National Forest. Indulge in seasonal flavors at the Elm, experience breathtaking views atop four fire towers, or catch a Big Ten football game at Memorial Stadium. More, including how to plan your fall getaway, at visitbloomington.com.